Well, it being 4 o'clock, um, I'd like to welcome you to the February 17th, 2015 meeting of the Northampton Transportation and Parking Commission. I'm the Chair Ryan O'Donnell, also the City Council for Ward 3. I'll first note the audio and video recording of this meeting. And let's begin by introducing ourselves, uh, starting with our Vice Chair. I'm Sunny Spine, Ward 7, City Councilor. Green Fighting, Director. Dave Palmer, Ranch Director of Central Services. Ned Huntley, Director of Public Works. Osbogic, Traffic Engineer. Devin Bruce, Planning Board. Nancy Forrestal, Parking Clerk. Russ Sankowitz, Police Chief. Ms. Lizer, thank you for being here. Um, is there any, any public comment? I don't believe that there is, judging from the empty chairs. So, um, seeing none, um, item four, approval of minutes. Uh, we have to wait, if there's no objection, until next month to approve last month's minutes, simply because they weren't prepared um, soon enough. So we can do two, two minutes next month, okay? Um, any reports from our subcommittee? Um, we don't have to. Okay, uh, kids, that and uh, the only thing that um, last time when I was sitting here and you asked what the material was for the um, Mass Central Rail Trail Leeds extension, and I didn't have an answer, and I went back and looked, and it, um, it was a vote of seven to zero for eight foot asphalt. Okay. Thank um, you for that information. Okay. Any other questions or discussion about committee reports? Okay, um, thank you. Uh, moving on to DPW updates. Uh, the only what comes to mind is uh, Bin Road. Uh, actually, just yesterday, we've been uh, westbound on Bin Road, which is comes to King Street at the National Drive. We got the uh, extended time, so right now they have more green time, which should help for it'll be alleviate traffic uh, and also at night it will be um, um, free operation which is uh, pretty much when cars come to intersection it will give green okay and, and just the line painting there's line painting in the there's the potential of line painting in the springtime we'll just see how the traffic signal adjustments work first before we go forward with that great thank you and yeah. Updates to the chair? Not at this moment. Any questions or discussion about the UW updates? Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, we have a special update from uh, Northampton Chief of Police. It's just a special update. Uh, <laughs> just hand these brochures around. We know a couple of months ago, uh, we tried to do that on Bridge Street, uh, Transportation Park Commission. Uh, struggled with what we could do and how we could do different things to get uh, better education and enforcement. We started then to look at what money was available through the Iowa Safety Division of the Executive Office of Public Safety, which we get grants for ticket or uh, uh, click it or ticket, a seatbelt, uh, drunk driving enforcement, underage, alcohol use and driving. And uh, they didn't have a whole lot available. They had about a thousand other grants available for enforcement for the pedestrian uh, crosswalk, which really is beneficial and we started to apply for that. We then found out about this new initiative um, that Mass DOT had issued the Health and Transportation Policy Directive encouraging mode shift to walking, cycling, and transit use. We started to look into this. Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is the, uh, the financial uh, fiduciary for the past through and scheduled some meeting with them last week to meet and talk about what we're going to do. As it turns out, we actually were qualified and the grant was due the afternoon of the day that we met with them. So we had to scramble to do quite a bit. The good part of this <coughs> is there's a broad educational component, uh, but even further than that, that the officers are participating, I'll just read it from their stuff, but we'll be asked to issue citations and warnings when appropriate. And this is, again, bicyclists do violate the rules, pedestrians have violated the rules, motor vehicle operators have violated the rules. The really cool part about this is the interaction the officer is supposed to ask a why question uh, because those are the keys to understanding needs for either for infrastructure improvements uh, and then after the enforcement awareness to move on and that's the that plan to work with communities to identify necessary improvements which may be funded in future years. Uh, during the final course, 
of uh, phase of the program, a walk assessment, bike assessment will be conducted into the program communities, community representatives, including engineering, public course planning, emergency response enforcement, others will be asked to participate. They actually take the survey results of why didn't you stop the pedestrian? Bad lighting, bad signage, bad sight lines, whatever it might be. Uh, so it's a data set that I think is important before we just try to figure out target one particular place, we think we know what it is. This will be data collection over a pretty extended program. I mentioned the $1,000 that was available for REACTS. Uh, we actually are budgeting for a $16,000 grant for over the course of the summer. <coughs> uh, six uh, encounters in each of these different locations. Main Street, North Hampton, Elm Street, Pritt Street, Pleasant Street, King Street, South Street. It'll be over six months, it'll be three a month, four hours of uh, on the bet. And it's just to gather the data and, and hand out this educational material for the people. Uh, we haven't been awarded it yet, but we called uh, EAPS to oversee this and they, they feel pretty confident based on the application. Uh, and just a couple of snippets of facts. 230 crosswalks in the city of Northampton. 21 of them are located in the downtown major pedestrian area less than a half a mile in distance. There are 13 additional crosswalks just in the Smith College area group back, which is less than a third of a mile in distance. So those are the ones that we're focusing on. Uh, most bicycle crashes took place in the immediate downtown business area, and I'll probably be returning movements to the rules of the road by the bicycle operator or motor vehicle operator. The average age of pedestrian victim crash was 44. Interesting. The average age of bicycle crashes was 33. So it's not just kids. It's an older population that are involved in these things. So we're hoping, we're pretty optimistic we're going to get awarded this. We probably won't know until late March or April. Uh, but right now it seems like we stand a really, really good chance of getting this. Particularly because Springfield, who was eligible, turned it down. Uh, and that pool of money freed up for us. So. Great. Well, well, thank you. Any any questions or comments on this? I think that's what you all wanted to try to get to at the end of the day. Anyhow. I think as we go forward <coughs> looking at crosswalks and pedestrian safety data is inescapably important. So integrating that into how we're doing, but beyond just guesswork and what we think yeah. ought to be there. Yeah. That the walk up on it, I think, is a really good good thing about this. And what period of time is it? Just the summer? We're going to do it probably if we get awarded in April, hopefully mobilized by <coughs> May. Uh, it's over a six month period of time. So we could do more, but we just don't have the staffing. Do it. This is a strictly overtime program. Uh, we're going to hand select the officers because they want the right people to be out there just <coughs> for the tickets for asking the questions that you're supposed to ask. But we develop, put all this in the Excel spreadsheet. The EPC makes sure that the staff staff reviews it, gives us recommendations, and probably come back and run the in the fall. So we get to use PV, PC staff time for the number crunching. Part of it, 10% <coughs> of the overall current is their staff time. Right? So it's all covered by Mass Staff. Uh, you know, we're thinking of doing Elm Street in May, but a lot of students leave that don't come back, so we want to focus on probably uh, uh, the school areas and uh, some valley area and uh, some might be in the fall when they return. And I think I will focus on that now. The arterial streets are out. So. Well, I think it's fantastic. I appreciate you securing the rent. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Is there anything about the parking of the they don't have names. They have like, you know, intersection. They're, they're referenced by something other than a unique ID. Is there anything that would help you track the incident and accident data against where it happens on the road? Like well, in which process? Well, they're identified by the geographic location of the missing car. Further, if there's personal injury, so it's on a motor vehicle collision. It's identified by the road it's on and the closest it's on the street. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, item A, just very briefly, I don't think it's really for discussion, but just to highlight, when you print out some electronic versions. Um, Cooley Dickinson did a, a study about transportation access to healthcare um, providers, hospitals, obviously. Um, and there was a uh, form about it last week, and they, 
district court is kind of was the focus of the forum. So I just wanted to share it with you. I think there's a lot uh, of interesting data in here and ideas and uh, perhaps things that could inform our work. There. So. I noticed it was done before the circulated bus was completed. Mm the Crosstown bus is not really. That's interesting. We certainly discussed at this, at this forum, but maybe the report itself is not. That's interesting. Okay. Um, so that's it. Yeah. Well, unless there's any questions on that, we'll move on. Um, and we have special guests today. Um, Christy Paul from the North Hampton Chamber of Commerce is here with a request to close Strong Avenue parking lot. Hi. Take it away. How are you? Good. Good. I'm Kristen Cole. I'm with the Northampton Chamber of Commerce. I'm the Director of Operations there. And I'm with Deb Flynn. She is the owner of Eastside Grill and a member of the Chamber's Board of Directors. And I'm here today to ask for your permission to once again use the Strong Avenue parking lot to, um, for, as part of our Chamber auction. Um, the date of the event this year is Friday, May 1st. That is the same Friday that it would have fallen on last year, which is the first Friday in May. The event um, is held at East Side. We use the inside and the outside of the restaurant. We have um, a 40 by 80 foot tent, which we erected in the parking lot last year. Um, let's see. I just wanted to give you a couple of ideas of the steps that we took last year and say that in our 20 years of having an auction fundraiser, last year was the most successful by far in terms of both revenue, res the amount of revenue we raised and the feedback from the people that came to the event. Um, we notified the abutters to the parking lot a week ahead of time by hand delivering letters to them. And we will we'll do that again, of course, this year. The week before the Monday morning of the week of the event, we put a big sign on the entrance to Strong Avenue lot, notifying the people that park here daily that the lot would not be available from 6 a.m. Friday until 10 a.m. Saturday morning. The, the Thursday morning before the event, we changed that sign, asking all cars to please be out by 6 a.m. Friday. We uh, took orange meter bags from the police department and at six o'clock Thursday night went and bagged off all the, the meters so it would be a clear visual to people not to stay overnight. And then the morning of the event, uh, Brian from the parking office met us there, closed up the lot for us and so we could get the tent erected. Um, per uh, David Pomerantz's recommendation, we had Dick Safe come and just check the existing stake marks to make sure that they were still safe to use and they were, which is good. And we stayed in close contact with Jody Casper at the police department leading up to the event so they would know what to expect. And I heard from her the Monday after the event. She sent me an email that they had a bike cop patrolling. They had no issues or complaints from neighbors. At the event itself, we hired a valet service to park the cars. We utilized some of the space that was left in the parking lot as well as got some runover space from the um, Tattoo Afterlife, it's the former downtown auto sales across from the chamber. And we used about 75 cars took advantage of the parking that night. And the morning after the event, the tent started coming down at 7 a.m. and the lot was returned to the public just before 10 a.m. 10 a.m., excuse me. We had about 300 guests to 10 last year and we expect to see between 300 and 350 this year. So thank you for your consideration and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions? Not, not just a bit. I think this is great. I'm happy to vote for it. But is it really us, or does it just central services and man just parking people this up? It might be kind of a message. Who, whose decision is this? Is it, is it the commission, or is it just your department? I think Chris is looking for approval, and then we take care of the management side of it. Okay. Because I suggested what, last year or yeah. the year before. Last year. Come before CPC. Yeah. And so if we're closing a lot, you know, we've done this before. Take care of the management a lot. Okay. Stop trying to take our power away. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. So, does someone want to make a very specific motion? I guess, you know, I'll make it. Um, so, I'll move that 
we approved the closing of the Strong Avenue parking lot early in the morning, Friday, May 1st, and um, and reopen it early in the morning, Saturday, May 2nd, or allow for it to be reopened. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Thank you very, Thank you very much. much. Okay. Um, I'd like to take, uh, unless there's any objection, I'd like to take item 12 out of order and look it up. Um, could, this is an ordinance that um, that I, I've suggested. It basically um, would set off street parking requirements for central business. Currently, there are none. Um, and say that if you're building something large, um, that does have off-street off parking spaces, that two spaces um, should be available, should be set aside for shared car parking, shared bicycle parking, or electric car charging. And this is all language that um, Mr. Feynman has um, worked on as well. Um, but that those spaces can be used for other purposes until such time as they uh, become necessary because of demand for car sharing bike sharing or electric vehicle charging. And I'll just tell you briefly, the genesis of this was um, thinking about Pleasant Street and developments um, on Pleasant Street and um, questions of, of parking. And I think downtown there are a lot of places where car sharing is really an elegant solution. And in the future we're going to build um, downtown, it might make sense to think about planning for car sharing um, at the very beginning. And then after that, electric vehicle charging and bike sharing were kind of added into the mix because they're useful ideas as well. Um, so that's what this would do. It would, uh, it would change our zoning code concerning off-street parking and central business. Wayne, I don't know if you want to add I just want to add one comment. Alan Sewell, City Solicitor, called um, just before I came down. He wants us to work a little bit of that last paragraph and notwithstanding, just so it's more measurable. So assuming you recommend this, it was just, you know, we're going to take it with a little bit to address this. I think they're easily addressable. I just want people to know what change. And those concerns would be when does the planning board know when the demand is there, when you know, and when would it tell projects to change? That's right. right. You know, the appeal of this is the planning board's already done this, but on a case by case basis. So, state hospital, the Cole Morgan permit includes the requirement for uh, zip car parking if there's ever a threat, if there's ever enough demand for it. So, it's sort of it's nice. To be able to know what the, what the directions are and we expect. Could, could Uber fit into this story? I mean, would it be confusing for Uber to have a car share service? I mean, it's, it's clearly for Zipcar, but it's, I, don't, I bet you didn't write it thinking about Uber. Yeah, I mean, it's not, I don't really think that's a car share service. It's a different kind of car share service. Right. You know, I mean, when you have automated cars and the cars start parking somewhere while waiting to be called, then that might fit in the donut. But I think right now, they really think that that's a place. But it does bring up some separate, I think it's sort of related to that question. We probably should, car shares had a clear definition of that. I think if there's more service like that, people start to think they want a better definition. Yeah, um, in the Cooley Dickinson report, it said that we didn't have Uber in town, but I was just wondering if someone took it to the airport from Hadley, so I'm wondering if we do. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Uh, yes, but if we don't, it's coming. So is this 10,000 square foot new construction, renovations? New construction. Just new construction. Because really it, it doesn't say that. Any project in central business, uh, that means you're applying for renovation permit through the building inspector. Or does it I think not matter to plan? I mean, I'm not a planning for mm -hmm. expert. But. I think it's good planning. As you're thinking, you're, if you're well, following I, the construction. I would, I would just think the whole thing, the entire section, 350 dash, dash eight, all of it's triggered by new construction. <coughs> incorrect. Um, because isn't, this is found in the section where. Um, but it does come in for. Um, that section eight does include some change of uses. If you had a warehouse or going to a restaurant, mm -hmm. you would you would have to buy parking in some districts. Okay. Well that then that is a policy consideration for us. 
um, you know, I guess you could present a scenario in which that wouldn't be desirable, but offhand I would think a change of use might be an appropriate trigger as well as the construction. Um, it would certainly speed up the process of, of securing car shed downtown as opposed to waiting for new buildings. Um, but that's, that's my two cents. Any further thoughts or? Um, is, is there a motion to make a positive recommendation of this ordinance? Oh, thank you. <laughs> is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, just giving back up now to item 10, this ordinance that comes to us uh, from the mayor and from Central Services. So, David, I don't know if you'd like to join sure. this point. Thank you, Council. So, this is a uh, basically a codification in the ordinances of a uh, program that's been in effect for years and years in the parking division. Um, I couldn't go back and find when um, it actually was implemented for the first time, but it's a lost ticket <coughs> fee program. So, that if you go to the garage, it only applies to the parking garage. If you go to the garage, stay there for an hour, stay there for a day, uh, and then say, I lost my ticket or I can't find my ticket. Uh, there was a $20 fee implemented to basically go to the change machine or the uh, parking ticket machine, put your money in, and it would give you a new card in order to get out of the garage. With the implementation of the new system back last fall and watching it over time, I realized that, uh, and looked at the code, it had never been memorialized in the ordinances uh, as far as charging this twenty dollars. So I figured you know, before we got more complaints about you know the fee, uh, that it should be in the ordinance. So that's that's the purpose of this. Uh, you can stay in the garage uh, for just under twelve dollars for twenty four hours. So if you then you know called Nancy in parking or you know, called or went to the machine and said, well you know I, I wasn't here that long. Or, I was here for a day and a half or whatever. You know, it had to be more than the twelve dollars to pay twenty four hours of free parking. So that's our, that's what we came up with justifying the, the twenty dollar fee, which was the fee that's been in place for again, we don't know how long. So this is to basically codify it, put it in the ordinance, uh, and move forward. Great. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? So if I want to hop on Amtrak and go on vacation for a week and come back. Yeah. Can I park my car there the whole time? Yeah. And so then I could take advantage of this and then take my house. So if you leave your thing. Right. Or for our thing. Right. Leave it at that stage, <laughs> yes. I, I think it's relevant that we're going to have more residential downtown that's using that lot. And I can see where your example's going to happen a lot. Yeah. Although we've had some preliminary discussions about designated paid parking at uh, by Union Station uh, for the new Amtrak platform. But again, it's, it's so nebulous at this point. Uh, and I think people would want the convenience of being able to park there as opposed to over the garage. Well, I'm thinking of the two housing projects that were voted in on Pleasant Street that will be a couple of years out, but there's not right. parking for all of those residential units. So we talk about that. They go to the garage, or they go, you know. So that I think the idea of, gee, I can leave it there for a couple of weeks for twenty dollars. I will always lose my ticket. Kind of feeling might sneak up on me, but. No. Yes, you do. You do. Well, um, two questions. Um, we we are getting regular calls uh, from people who are taking the train, asking where they can leave their vehicles. Um, the city ordinance as it reads now says no more than 24 hours in a lot. So, you know, there's kind of a cross information there. Um, I mean, do we want people to stay for a month at a time in the garage um, and warehouse their car there? Or, going to set a limit as to how long there's they can be there for um, 
it's just something to maybe think about um, because people are taking the train and they are asking for where are we going to leave our car for the weekend, for a week, for two weeks. Um, so it, it is something that you may want to discuss. So is there no is there currently no enforcement of that rule or any immediate plan to enforce it? So could Wayne's scenario actually be happening under our noses right now? And, and we, we don't even know it. Well, people are leaving their vehicles in there for you know, an extended period of time. I mean, they're watched by the, Brian watches right. cars over there. He brings them to my attention if they've been there for an extended period of time. For extended period means days or months or? A month. Yeah. And we're not collecting any revenue on that? Sure, they're paying when they leave. They are. Right. But this could be a, a good example of I lost yeah. my ticket yeah. and yeah. I'm only paying $20 instead of a month's worth of 50 cents an hour. Which would be how much? Well, 20 days. Yeah. How much is a day, did you say? About 12 50 a day, $12 okay. a day. Yeah. So 150 bucks or so. Yeah. Don't they already have long term parkers that can stay longer than 24 hours in there. The leaseholders? Yes. Based on There's a different clause that covers that. They will be out 24 hours. They're not allowed to stay 24 hours either? They do. Is it posted somewhere that there's a 24 hour limit? No. <laughs> that's, that's where, I mean, the lack of communication and, I mean, we have a city ordinance that says that you will not park more than 24 hours and yet people are and they're being allowed to. So uh, that may be an ordinance change that needs to come about. I think the discussion now, my suggestion is to wait and see how these discussions go to the administration to see if we have a good solution here that may take all the Amtrak parking or if it doesn't work through the distance. And we should have that within a month or two probably. So. And in any case, it might be a separate ordinance than the one we're looking at today. It's just been lost. Yeah. Yeah. It's more expansive yeah. conversation. Right, because you've got people that are buying permits for parking for their staffs and they're in the garage on a monthly basis. Who are we talking about? I'm People buying permits for their staffs. The leaseholder permits? Yeah, to, to park in the garage on a month to month basis. But this is this is a different scenario. So maybe we sell train passes for parking. Similar to what we're doing with the leaseholder passes. We have to think about it if it's a committee because it, I think it, we also want to act preventatively or preemptively, I should say, because we're going to have people in that neighborhood in Ward 3 that start complaining that people are parking for long periods of time on their streets. Right. So we're going to have to figure out <coughs> solutions around this. I think those are all good points. I would suggest maybe we put this as a bullet on our agenda for March and to have a <coughs> broad discussion about those challenges. The other issue is also mm -hmm. when we get the parking report from the office. Yeah. And it might be around the recommendations will be there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How do bigger cities take care of this when they come into a lot and they actually must tag the license plate somehow? They have smaller fees, like Logan has a $5 fee if you lose your ticket, plus if you click on the parking lot. They must be tagging plates coming in so they know. Yeah. Maybe cameras yeah. in and out? We don't know. Drones. They, they, use drones. Drones. they probably use license plate readers. Right. Little PRs because that's all they find in stolen cars and all that yeah. stuff. So. Okay. To be continued for this month, perhaps. Or? Um, all right. Well, on, on this this particular ordinance about uh, uh, the fee for a lost fine for a lost ticket, um, is there a motion to give it a positive recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Two seconds. Any discussion on the motion? Further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you very much. Um, the final ordinance is just a simple one, updating the term parking division manager, which is kind of a holdover. And I suggest the director of central services because I like to give David comments as much work to do as possible. Um, that being said, I have no idea if this is the correct thing to do. Uh, so I brought this. Okay. Um, you know, is this, this is the right name change? Certainly we all have a parking division manager. So 
I, I'm open enough to the expertise around the table. Is this part of the administrative order? No. 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 I think it was missed by the administrative order. Yeah. It's, it, it's fine. Mm -hmm. We're talking about just sort of designation and title here officially. Um, I mean, granted, the collection goes to the collectors, uh, but it's the parking maintenance staff that's doing the collection. So it's, it's if you need to sort of put it someplace, uh, that's fine, Tessa. Okay. Well, thank you. That, that's it's very big of you. Um, what I might suggest, actually, thinking about it and also just kind of hearing the initial reaction is, I might suggest that we postpone this to March as well, and then I'll just ask the mayor. Frankly, the mayor is, you know, ultimately responsible for this, you know, anyway. So why don't I why don't I do that? He may come up with the right title. It may have been something he intended to do with the administrative order and just didn't. So okay, fine. So no objection to doing that to the postponement. Okay, so it's postponed without any objection. Um, thank you. Um, no discussion items, any new business? Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? So Second. Second. That's All in favor? Wow. Yeah, All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you.